war. You know what they say, the bigger they are, the harder they smash. And these metallic behemoths are no stranger to that philosophy. That's why I'm delivering this tall order consisting of a list of my top 10 strongest giants in the Transformers live action movies. I repeat, the live action movies. I want to make this clear because I know it's inevitable that I'm going to get questions asking why I didn't include certain Transformers who weren't in the films. So I hope I don't have to worry about clarifying this in the comments later. But anyways, this list won't just be featuring the giant of the TF films. It'll also consist of all of the combiners because there honestly aren't that many of them who've graced the silver screen. So I think this will help balance out the competition. To be on the list, the robot must be 40 feet or taller. Not every Transformer can be in it and we don't want to make this video longer than it has to be. The time spent editing these type of uploads are a pain as is. Number 10. Demolisher. The monstrous unicycle on Cybertronian steroids. This guy was one of the first official giants to appear in the live action movies. Before the Dinobots came into the picture, he was the largest non-combined Transformer seen in the Michael Bay films. And boy did he make an impression. So much so that he damn near leveled half of Shanghai, China. But the casualties he caused weren't necessarily done out of typical Decepticon rage. They were done because he was trying to haul ass and escape from the Non-Biological Extraterrestrial Species Treaty, also known as NEST. Yeah, for a bot that's a staggering 70 feet tall, Demolisher is one of the most cowardly Decepticons there is. And he's definitely not the brightest one either. But he's powerful enough to fight with multiple foes. He can use his excavator alt mode's tracks his wheels to travel as a unicycle and attack by moving the other wheel over his head to crush everything in front of him. After violating the Autobot's speed limit, he was immobilized by having his bottom wheel destroyed, causing him to faceplant off of a bridge. He told Optimus Prime that the Autobots should get ready to meet their impending doom, but his kind words was met with a blast to the face. Coming in at number 9, we got the OG Jetfire. If you saw my top 16 strongest Transformers video, you pretty much know what I think about this guy. He's awesome, but his age and worn down state makes him less threatening than he was when he was in his prime when he used to serve under the Fallen. Shortly after defecting from the Decepticons, Jetfire was warped from Cybertron until he eventually crashed from orbit into the Earth and laid dormant for thousands of years. He woke up for a little while while going on many adventures searching for the Allspark only to go into stasis lock because he ran out of Energon. And this second slumber didn't do the poor guy any favors. Because of this, he's got rust in places where the sun doesn't shine, and most of his weapons get jammed easily. Fire! Oh, I said fire! Oh, bollocks. Worthless. Ah! But the old timer still has a few tricks up his sleeves. For one, he will still build to open a space bridge without the use of a pillow or any other MacGuffin in the Bay films. In other words, he can teleport, making him one of the fastest Autobots. Not only is he one of the fastest, he was also one of the tallest Autobots in the live action films, coming in at 50 feet. But that record was broken two movies later when the Dinobots were introduced. This dude put up a hell of a fight at the climax of TF2, but he was ultimately immobilized when Scorponox's bitch ass drilled a hole through his stomach. Little Bastion was waiting to do that since Transformers 1. But anyways, Jetfire eventually sacrificed his life to grant our boy Optimus killer upgrades to put an end to the Fallen. What's wrong? Number 8. Infernicus. When threats approach, the Infernicon demons combine to form the centering force of infernal fury that is Infernicus. Tall and dark with no personality, this guy is the creator Quintessa's right hand man. He basically shoots stuff, and that's about it. I was honestly disappointed with this combiner because when you hear the name Infernicus, you think he's gonna do something badass like melt someone with some kind of infernal powers. But no, he's just there to kick Optimus down to his knees while he's already chained down by Contessa. His toy, which we saw before seeing what he looked like on screen, was so misleading. He doesn't feature the giant sword or the cool looking claw. And he's one of the shortest combiners, coming in at 42 feet, which is just 2 feet taller than the Fallen. I had high hopes for this guy, like he should have wrecked shop, but Optimus was easily able to knock him out of his combined state and finish off all 5 Infernicon components in one slash. <laughs> Swooping in at number 7 is Strafe. Originally known as Swoop, Strafe is one of the smallest Dinobots in the Coalition. 
Unlike his G1 counterpart, he was beified to the max and now has two heads instead of one. Not sure why this design choice was made, but I guess it works since he now has two options on which head he wants to use to devour Decepticons. We don't really see Strafe do much other than allow the Beaster to ride on his back during the epic battle in Hong Kong. He also aided in escorting the sea to safety. I wish I could say more about the guy, but there's not much to say since his role wasn't really that significant. We didn't even see him make a return in tier 5. All that was left was his cute little successor, Mini Strafe. Isn't he adorable? Get off you, monkey! I will kill you, flying rat! Number 6. Slug The 71 foot tall savage Dinobot Destroyer who transforms into a mechanical spike triceratops. Slug was among the Dinobots trapped aboard Lockdown ship until the Autobots hijacked that section for themselves. After he was freed and Optimus knocked some sense into his bullheaded leader, he allowed Drift to ride him in the battle. As you'd expect, he put those horns into action mode, completely wrecking every Decepticon drone who dared stand in his way. After that, he helped escort the Seed to a safe location, destroying an orbital assault carrier by ramming his head into it. In the last night, his role wasn't really that noteworthy though. He simply burrows into the ground for a surprise attack on the Transformers reaction force. It was a pretty epic scene, but a little lackluster, especially since it's his only action sequence in the movie. We don't even see him anymore after that, leaving us to question where he is or if he even made it out alive. Poking his way into the fifth spot is the spikiest Dinobot, Scorn. This guy doesn't have much of a built personality, but he does seem to obey whichever Autobot demands to be the leader of him. Interestingly enough, he's an original Dinobot who never appeared in the original G1 cartoon and the only Dinobot without a miniature version of himself in TF5. And man, this guy just looks badass, like he's actually my favorite design out of all the Dinobots in the TF films. Just look at how cool this dude looks with his massive Scrapmaker sword wrapped around his neck as he watches Optimus prove himself worthy to lead his group. I only wish I'd seen his robot mode in action since he switches to his Spinosaurus alt mode to take down KSI Decepticons. He's arguably the biggest of all the Dinobots coming in at around 87 feet tall and his massive size makes him almost impossible to bring down. My boy Scorn is the demolition specialist and in this action scene it really shows. Just check out this dino spinner he does on a horde of Decepticons proving that his spikes aren't just for show. I'm still a little shocked that Crosshairs was willing to risk becoming an Autobot pincushion in order to ride him. Sadly this would be the first and last time we would see Scorn. After the battle in Hong Kong, he was last seen running into a nearby forest in his dino mode. I guess he was a nice addition while he lasted. Rolling in at number 4 is the largest robot on this list, Devastator. I'm not gonna lie, it was hard deciding where I wanted to place this giant Decepticon warrior on this list. Although he's the biggest and one of the most threatening, he's not really that versatile. This combiner is so huge that his body simply cannot support itself when carrying his weight upright, forcing him to lumber on all fours. The poor guy could barely even keep his head up. Thankfully, he has his Vortex Grinder, an ability that allows him to expand his mouth and vacuum in things that he couldn't reach with his hands. The 103 foot Decepticon is said to be a tormented being. Similar to his G1 counterpart, his psyche is pretty much screwed since his Constructicon components are always in a constant tug of war of superiority. Rage and pain are pretty much all he knows, pushing aside whatever intelligence he might possess. During a mission to unearth the Harvester in Egypt, he was taken out by a railgun, causing him to shatter into many pieces as his body tumbled down the pyramid. Coming in at number 3 is the Dark Decepticon Overlord, The Fallen. Yeah, I know, I'm just as surprised as you are that this guy made the list. But he's actually one of the tallest non-combining Decepticons, standing at 42 feet. What's there not to say about this guy? He was probably one of the most promising yet underutilized villains in all of the films. Which is sad because there's so much lore regarding his character in the comics, especially the movie adaptations. He's literally one of the only original Primes who dared to step out and carve his own path. From that day forward, the Prime known as Megatronus was referred to as The Fallen, a name which he himself embraced. And this guy is literally the kitchen sink when it comes to abilities. He can teleport, he can throw shit at you with telekinesis. Thanks to an artificial matrix of leadership, he commands mystic and tropic arts and he wields a pretty cool looking staff. Unfortunately, he wasn't able to fulfill his plans of harvesting the Earth's sun. Even after absorbing life energy from Decepticon hatchlings, he wasn't really able to use all of his power and he was ultimately wrecked by Jet Convoy Optimus Prime. Talk about bad luck. 
stomping in at Numero Dos is the fierce Dinobot King, Grimlock. Simply put, Grimlock is one of the most powerful warriors alive. So powerful in fact that whoever seeks his help must challenge him in combat and meet his standard of strength. Just look at our boy Optimus, he had to learn this rule the hard way. Let me lead you. But anyways, Grimlock was able to get a spot above the Fallen because he was able to hold his own in a fight against Optimus who currently wielded the Matrix of Leadership, unlike the Fallen who only lasted a few minutes with our red and blue Robo Jesus. Not to mention the fact that Grimlock has a higher kill count. Oh, and did I mention that he's literally the only Dinobot to fight in his robot mode in the live action films? He came in swinging with his fist that doubles as a mace and his giant club which he tried to use on Optimus before submitting to him. Grimlock and the Autobot commander would lead a charge into Hong Kong annihilating every Decepticon drone in sight. While in dinosaur mode, he can chomp through enemies like a cesium salami sandwich and he can melt the chassis off of Decepticons with his fire breath. Unlike his other giant dino bros, he has a more prominent role in TF5 The Last Night. He not only aided Slug in laying a trap for the TRF forces, he was also able to wreck a few Decepticons like Barricade which he swatted with his tail before slamming Megatron himself into the ground. And he managed to snap one of the Dreadbots in half. Grimlock is truly the king of all kings. Number 1. Dragonstorm Long ago before the Great Cybertron War lived a being known as Quintessa. She created 12 elite warriors who would ultimately oppose her, taking the staff that she used to control over the planet of Cybertron. By the 5th century CE, the Night Warriors had landed on Earth where their existence would be kept secret by Merlin. After forging a partnership with the self-proclaimed wizard, they came to the conclusion that humanity was worthy of survival, with Storm Rain granting ownership of the staff to Merlin. All of a sudden, a giant three-headed dragon appeared at Merlin's behest to wipe out the enemies of Camelot, winning the battle for King Arthur's forces. This mighty being is known as Dragonstorm, arguably the strongest and oldest combiner in the live action films. Coming in at roughly around 70 feet, Dragonstorm is comprised with the most Transformer components consisting of 12 Iacon Knights. But this form doesn't necessarily require all 12 Knights since Skullatron and two of the other Knights were killed by Nemesis Prime. Outraged that Optimus had been in Quintessa's service, the Knights began stomping him out. The judgment is death until Cade's ass pulled talisman transformed into the Excalibur, stopping the knight's blade. Seeing this, they decided to ally themselves with the Autobots and later assisted in the battle to stop Quintessa from stealing the Earth's life force. As Dragonstorm, they can breathe fire out of all three heads and use its massive body to trample lesser beings. Although his transformation has no practicalities to it since he consists mostly of spikes, I can't refute the fact that he's an A-list player among the giants and combiners and a legend in his own right. And that's where we're going to end this video. I hope you enjoyed the list. You guys have been asking me to do a video consisting of my top 10 combiners, but as I mentioned earlier, there was only 3 combiners in the entire film franchise. So I had to include other giant robots who could face them toe to toe. Hopefully we see more of them in some of the newer films. But enough wishful thinking from me. What do you guys think of my rankings? Did you like the list? Or do you think I should have included other robots? Let me know down in the comments below. As always, I ask that you like or dislike the video. It doesn't have to be a thumbs up, it can be a thumbs down. Any feedback is good feedback and will only help me improve on my channel. But if you really enjoyed the video, it would help me out tremendously if you shared it on social media outlets with all your friends and followers. Sharing really makes a difference. And if you watched the video in its entirety, follow your comment up with hashtag till all gamers are one. But this is your boy RBG signing out on another video. I'll catch you guys later. Peace out. Now it's your